Father in heaven, thanks for allowing us to come together once again uh, to study your word so that we can continue to improve our spiritual knowledge uh, so that we can uh, continue to improve our relationship with you. Yeah. We ask that you watch over our brothers and sisters that are on their way to the building uh, and watch over the sick and shut in. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So, today I want to talk about uh, something that's very important uh, in our whole day. Uh, whether we are in church or uh, at home or at work, uh, whatever, is listening. The art of listening. Um, and one thing that people uh, don't know about listening is that the majority of us haven't been taught how to listen. Yeah. Uh, we just kind of like, uh, kind of like go through our day uh, without really focusing on how we listen uh, to uh, the different things that we hear throughout the day. Right. So I want to point out that uh, hearing is a physical uh, thing that our bodies have to right. be able to hear, mm -hmm. to be able to hear words and sounds and everything. Uh, listening requires us to add thinking to what we hear. Right. So then uh, listening, uh, listening is a skill that we develop over time. Uh, so, you know, it's like, so someone can speak. Oh, yeah. Someone can speak and we can hear the words, right. but we may not understand what they're saying. Oh, shit. It's because they're listening. So we can hear them, <coughs> but, but our listening is not tuned into them. So that's why I want to talk today about listening. And, and uh, the Bible uh, has many verses uh, about uh, listening. Uh, and I, uh, I uh, on my mind right now, it's just, uh, I, uh, I, I, I did a lot of math stuff when I was young. And it's, still, it's still in my head. So I just want to use an example. Uh, with, with math. Uh, there's this relationship uh, in math, and it's really thermodynamics, which is a branch of math that says that pressure times volume is equal to the gas constant times temperature. So then, so then uh, hearing, hearing, everybody heard me say that pressure times volume is equal to the gas constant times temperature. But when we listen, we, we, hear, we not only do we hear uh, the words that were spoken, but listening says then, if that's true, then P is equal to R T O P, and B is equal to R T O P. So listening, listening causes us to analyze more what's being said, you know? So in other words, I'm. You know, okay, you know, I, I know most of you all didn't study math, but I just want to give a point that hearing, hearing, we take things for, for what it is, the right. face value only. Right. So we hear the words, or we read the Bible, we read the words, okay? Right. So that's hearing. Right. Hearing is just to acknowledge the word that we read or the word that we heard. Listening requires us to analyze, think closer, think deeper. So mm -hmm. I was talking the other week, a couple of weeks ago, uh, about the spiritual truths in the Bible are hidden from us unless we have desire in our heart to know God, unless we pray for understanding, mm -hmm. then the spiritual law is revealed to us. We can't simply uh, get a PhD in English and study the words and think that we're gonna get the spiritual truth. Right. We'll get the historical perspective of the Bible if we know the words. Mm -hmm. But we can only know the spiritual truth through a relationship with God. Right. So listening, listening is something that we wanna uh, put some time uh, into when we, when we read the Bible. Mm -hmm. I give you one another uh, Bible verse. Uh, I don't want 
I didn't want to play too much with that mass stuff. Mm -hmm. But I think there's one over in Proverbs. Uh, Proverbs uh, 18. Uh, it says, death and life is in the power of the tongue. Uh, 18, Proverbs 18.21. Please look there. It says, uh, it says, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. And when I first came uh, in, into the church, this verse always stayed with me. It's a very powerful uh, verse. It's saying a lot. It's saying that, it's, when I read this, I'm, I'm saying, it, it's saying that there's power in the tongue. It's one thing it says. Right. It's saying there's power in the tongue. And it says that there's a choice. Our, uh, the tongue has a choice. The choice uh, is death and life. So we can, we can speak death with our tongue, uh, and die and start to slowly die, or we can speak life and live. Right. So it's all in a choice that we make. So what I'm getting at is that if we just read these words, we won't get the full, we won't get the full meaning out of what this is telling us. Yeah. This one verse. Right. There's a lot in there in that verse that death and life is in the power of the tongue. So I just want uh, you know today uh, yeah, just make pattern. some make some uh, remind us. Uh, uh, about uh, the importance of listening. And that's why, you know, Brother Matthew likes to spend so much time with word study, uh, you know, study Bible, uh, looking at the Greek uh, and Hebrew meaning sometimes, mm -hmm. so that we can listen better to what the scripture is saying. Mm -hmm. Because always the English word don't give us a, a full meaning uh, of the verses. Right. So it's good to, good to go back. So, uh, and you know, listening is so important. I remember I, I had a professor, uh, li listening, uh, hearing, you know, is with the ears, but when you read, it's the same thing. Because, you know, it's like you can read the words, uh, and if your mind is drifting off yeah, yeah. Uh, while you're reading, you'll just be uh, going through the words, That's you know? Right. You won't be uh, absorbing uh, what, what you're really reading. So I, I had a professor once that told the whole <laughs> class that we don't know how to read. Right. And we're like, what? You know, it's like we, we did well in reading. You know, we know right. how to read. And then he, then, he, then he showed us that we couldn't That's read. Right. He showed us that in the problem we were working on, how all of us missed the whole point. Yes. You know, just like missing one key little word. Right. You know, changed the whole, changed the whole problem. So... Uh, listening is something that we want to uh, uh, put more time at. There have been studies done that said that most of us spend about 45% of our day listening, okay? But most of us have not been taught how to listen, okay? So that puts us at a disadvantage. So what happens is uh, many times we misunderstand people because we're not listening to what they're telling us. Mm -hmm. So, you know, listening involves, uh, you know, if, if, if they're in front of us, you know, listening involves looking at their face, you know, mm -hmm. what kind of facial expression they have, how are they moving their hands, you know? It's right. like we're listening, we're listening, we're listening with our eyes too. Yes. Our eyes tell us, you know, uh, is, is this person, uh, uh, is, is what, uh, it, it's what he's saying in agreement with the way his body is moving. Mm -hmm. That's how sometimes we can tell when people are lying to us. That's oh, right. It's like their mouth is saying one thing and their body is saying something else. That's right. You right. Know? So listening, uh, listening uh, is, uh, is a, a very important uh, part of our day. So uh, let's uh, look at the sheet that I passed out. Mm -hmm. uh, so we can get started uh, with these verses. Uh, Matthew 11, 15, the first one. It says, uh, he that yet hath ears to hear, uh, let him hear. Uh, and the next one, Revelation 2, 7, says, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. Right. 
to him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. And Jesus also said down in Mark 4, 23, if any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And he said to them, take heed what ye hear. Uh, with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you. And unto you that hear shall more be given. For he that hath, to him shall be given. And he that hath not, from him shall be taken even that which he hath. So, you know, Jesus is saying, you know, not only uh, uh, be uh, uh, careful about hearing, uh, but be mindful about uh, what you listen to all day. Mm -hmm. Now, remember, you know, I was talking about uh, some of the words in the rap music. You know, it's like, you know, we, we're walking around bopping to the beat, you know, but, but our subliminal mind, our subconscious mind, is picking up all of those words and programming our thought, and we mm -hmm. don't even know it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those words are bad. Yeah. So we have to be mindful about what we put in our head. So, you know, it's like the, a lot of the rap music is not something that we want to listen to uh, all day long, you know, because it starts to affect uh, our thinking. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15 says, be not, be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Mm -hmm. That's what I was just saying, right. you know. Is that uh, evil communications is what the, a lot of the lyrics in the rap music is. It's an evil communication. Right, and it right. says it corrupts good manners. It corrupts our soul, our being, mm -hmm. uh, because it becomes a part of who we are, you know? Right. And remember I was talking about the glass. Mm -hmm. uh, we can try to get all the air out or we can uh, fill the glass up with something else. Mm -hmm. So in other words, we, we want to fill up with the spirit. We want to fill up with the spirit so that all the worldly bad stuff gets pushed out of us. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's, uh, let me see uh, where I started on your sheet. Okay. Jesus. So I uh, collected some information on uh, different levels of listening. And some people are saying there are like three levels of listening. And on your sheet, to, down towards the bottom, you can see that the first level is simply hearing the words. And what I was saying is that we don't really gain anything from just hearing the words. We have to understand the words. You know, so you know, if we if we just uh, just listen to the words and. Uh, don't relate to those words. Uh, don't try to, uh, you know, uh, uh, get uh, the meaning out of the word, get the message out of the word. Then we don't grow. That's um, true. Yeah. So what happens is, if we at the first level and we just hear the words, then more likely than not, we're going to misunderstand uh, what's being said. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, uh, Brother Dean. Sometimes when I'm tired and I try to read, there's been times when I've read something and came back and said, what did I read? I don't, I don't, it's like, did I read this? Yeah. <clears throat> because my mind wasn't really into it. I was just reading the words and then I couldn't come back and say what I read. That's so. right. It's like un unproductive when you're tired. That's why we want to get a good night's sleep before we come to church uh, so that we can uh, so that we can uh, hear. understand and hear uh, what's being said mm -hmm. you know because if we if we like yawning and you know can barely stay awake you know uh, then uh, it's not fruitful 
we're not gaining anything, you know? So we want to uh, prepare uh, for Sunday morning. We want to prepare on Saturday evening. Right, yeah. And, and they get some rest. And the second level uh, is listening in spurts. And we in this time now of multitasking, you know, we got we got uh, maybe people that we work with, our friends, sending us emails and text messages, and you know, calling them, calling us on the phone, and you know, the television going, the radio going. Uh, so it's like this level, second level here, listening in spurts, means that we come in and out. You know, yeah. it's like we may be sitting trying to read uh, a chapter in the Bible but other stuff around us is going on uh, that keep distracting us. So we'll read a few minutes and then we'll uh, deal with the phone or, or somebody calling us or whatever, and then we'll come back. So that uh, is listing at spurts. So what happens there, at that level, uh, we pick up a little more than we do when we just listen to the words. Right. But we're still missing key points. When, yeah. we, when we listen in spurts, mm -hmm. because our mind is wondering. Mm -hmm. Our mind, uh, where the listening uh, happens, happens, is wondering. So we're not like, we're not focused on, uh, we're not focused on, uh, on uh, listening. Right. And the third level is where we want to be. That is uh, the empathetic listening. That is when uh, we basically tune out everything else. Mm -hmm. We focus on the words that we're reading or the words that we're hearing. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we have a better chance of getting the full meaning uh, out of what's being said or the words that are written that we're reading. Uh, right. Then it's like when we uh, uh, focus uh, with empathetic listening, then we can start to grow. Yes. Then we can start to see the results of, you know, the, the results of study. Uh, it's when we, when we can focus. Uh, and then after uh, these three levels of listening, uh, I think on your paper I put uh, different kinds of listeners. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So in the Bible, it talks about um, uh, three different kinds of listeners. And the listener is the person, okay? So the, the listener is the person that is listening. So uh, the first kind of person that the Bible talks about is uh, the person that is dull of hearing. So in Hebrews, if you turn with me to Hebrews chapter five, uh, verse eight, uh, he talks about the person uh, that is dull of hearing. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 5.8. Mm -hmm. So it says, Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. Mm -hmm. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him called of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. For when, for when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk, and not of strong meat. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So this reference here to uh, people that are dull of hearing uh, it was verse 11. Uh, they're dull of hearing, uh, and because they're dull of hearing, they're like a babe uh, in Christ. It means that they don't really understand God. It's because their hearing is dull. 
It means that uh, they, they, they come to worship, they hear the words, uh, but they don't, uh, they don't pray for understanding. Mm. Uh, they don't uh, uh, dwell on those words mm. so that they can get the meaning out of the words. Mm. You know, they just walk around and they can quote some scripture or whatever, but it hasn't become a part of them. Mm. So you, you hear it's not a part of them by the words they speak and the way they act. Mm. Okay. When, when the word becomes a part of you, it right. changes uh, your personality. It makes you more humble. Uh, it makes you respect people. Uh, it sh basically, you start to show the fruit of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this uh, uh, goal of hearing is a good one. I pretty uh, today I couldn't keep it the one sheet. Uh, it's uh, so much stuff on on listening that uh, had to had to use two sheets. Right. But if you uh, in your own time, I go into the book and uh, study those scriptures. Uh, I think you'll get more out of uh, listening uh, than this class. Jesus also said in. Uh, Matthew 13, 13, he said, uh, because of uh, people that were dull of hearing, uh, that couldn't understand what he was saying, mm -hmm. he said, because of them, in Matthew 13, 13, he says, therefore, speak I to them in parables, mm. because they, seeing, see not. In other words, they don't know what they're looking at. Mm. Right. You know? yeah. uh, they, because they see and see not, and hearing, they hear not. Mm. So, you know, they don't know what they're looking at, and they don't know what they hear. Right. Neither do they understand, mm. you know, which is the listening. Neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which said, by hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart. See? Right, right. We have to we have to get uh, uh, a relationship with the Lord in our heart mm. before we can understand these words yes. that are written in the Bible. Amen. Right. Amen. Yeah. It says, and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. Wow. So that's Jesus saying, that's why he's speaking parables, uh, so that uh, only the people that have a good relationship with the Lord and have the Lord in their heart will understand these words. Right. You know, he's not revealing, uh, he's not revealing uh, the kingdom to those that don't believe. Mm -hmm. So we have to first believe mm -hmm. and then we can understand the scriptures and the kingdom will be revealed to us. Amen. Yep. Mm -hmm. So makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And take a look. Uh, go down to Matthew 13, 16. Yeah. And just a few verse, one verse down. That says, But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Mm -hmm. For verily I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear, and have not heard them. So it's like, uh, it's like uh, all of us are probably old enough uh, to have been in situations where maybe we're in a group of people or something, and something happened. Right. And, you know, some people see it and others did. Right. So it's like yeah. things can be right in front of you right. and you don't see it. Yes. You know? Yes. So Understood. our yeah, our understanding comes by our relationship with God, mm -hmm. our obedience 
uh, to God, our relationship with God, uh, having the Lord in our heart, then we can understand more. And as our relationship with the Lord gets better, we we'll see more. Yes. Yeah. The second, uh, uh, second type of uh, listener, the second type of person uh, is uh, those people with itching ears. So, yeah, the Bible calls it, the Bible, uh, Bible says uh, they have itching ears. Uh, itching, the word itching, it just means that they're uh, uh, restless. Okay. You know, trouble. Yeah, trouble. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Paul said uh, in 2 Timothy 4, 2 Timothy 4, verse 3. Paul says in 2 Timothy 4, 3, he says, uh, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned into fables. So, uh, Paul was uh, letting the Christians at that time know what was coming, mm. that uh, people, people that um, couldn't hear, mm. couldn't see, were redefining what God was and raising up teachers to teach what they believe. Oh, right, yeah. right. So that's why we have all of these denominations now. Yes. You know, it's because they don't want to uh, or they can't hear uh, what's written. Right. They can't hear. Right. So they hear what they want to hear, in other yes. words. Yes. You know, you you know uh, okay. a lot of bad relationships. Uh, happen, uh, I say, I should say they, uh, they, a lot of bad relationships continue because people can't hear. Right, yeah. They can't hear, it's like the wife can't hear what the husband's telling her, right. or the husband can't hear what the wife telling him. Right, yeah. So it's like, they, yeah, the mind is blocked, the mind is blocked out. They have deaf ears, they can't hear. Heard so what then, she said, but you can't understand. Yeah, so then it's always arguments, always yeah. misunderstanding, mm -hmm. you know, because they ain't not listening. Right. You know? And, you know, so then the same thing happens when without understanding another word. Mm -hmm. So then we have all these denominations propped up because people trying to twist the scriptures uh, to suit uh, uh, their definition of what uh, God is saying, mm -hmm. you know? So they don't want to, uh, they don't want to accept that God says you have to be baptized, right? Yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So then they try to twist that around and say, no, you don't have to get baptized. Yeah, yeah. You know, because that's what suits them. Right, yeah. You know, maybe they got a bunch of people in their congregation uh, that don't want to get baptized. Right, yeah. or, or, or want to use a baptism in another church. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever the case is, you know, they, in their mind, have rationalized uh, there's no need for a baptism. Tism. Mm -hmm. Even though it's written here, all of us in this church know that it's written in black and white. You right. gotta get baptized. Mm -hmm. right. They can't see it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's what he's talking about uh, uh, with itching ears, uh, wanting to redefine uh, God's law, redefine who God is. Right. So that's the second, second type of listener that the Bible talks about. Mm -hmm with itching ears. And if you flip over to Isaiah chapter 30, verse 8. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 30, uh, verse 8. He also, in, in the Old Testament, uh, talked about uh, the same type of listener. Isaiah 8. He says, uh, Now go, write it before them in a table, and note it in a book that it may be for the time to come forever and ever, that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord. That's what I was just talking about. 
children, right. children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophecy not, unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things. In other words, uh, uh, the prophet, they want, people wanted the prophets to tell them what they wanted to hear, mm -hmm. not what God said. Yes. You know? So it says, prophecy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things. Prophecy deceits. Get you out of the way. Turn aside out of the path. Because the Holy One of Israel, of course, uh, the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. So even back in the time of Isaiah, people didn't want to hear no. uh, what God was saying. They tried, to, they tried to twist it around and say, oh, he didn't really mean this. Mm -hmm. You know, he meant that, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, because uh, man's nature is to uh, want to do what he wants to do. So it blocks, blocks his hearing, his yes. ability to hear, blocks his ability to see. The third thing the Bible, third type of listener that the Bible talks about is uh, the kind that we want to be. Uh, those who listen with a noble and good heart. And in uh, Jesus' parable about the soils uh, over in Luke, Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8, verse 11. Luke 8, 11. Jesus is explaining uh, the parable of the soils. And he says, now the parable is this. Mm -hmm. The seed of the word of God. The seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside, or they that hear, then cometh the devil and taketh away the word out of their hearts, mm -hmm. lest they should believe and be saved. They on the rock or they which, when they hear, receive the word with joy. And these have no root, which for a while believe, and in time of temptation fall away. And that which fell among thorns are they which, when they have heard, go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life, and bring no fruit to per perfection. But that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. Mm -hmm. So he's talking about using the uh, parables with different types of uh, uh, environments that seeds can fall on and right. why the seeds uh, may grow, uh, not grow at all mm -hmm. or grow for a short time. Yes. Uh, or, or grow. He's talking about listening. He's talking about listening. So, take a look at Acts 17.10. Uh, In Acts 17.10, it says, uh, And the brethren immediately sent Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, mm -hmm. who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more, more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind, mm -hmm. and searched the scripture daily, mm -hmm. whether, whether those things were so. Therefore, many of them believed, mm -hmm. also of honorable women which were Greeks, and of men, not a few. Mm -hmm. So, so he's talking about uh, he, the emphasis uh, should go on uh, uh, verse eleven, Acts seventeen eleven, which says that these people were more more noble than those in Thessalonica, mm -hmm. in that they received the word with all readiness of mind. Mm -hmm. In other words, their heart was open. They, their heart was open to receive uh, the truth uh, from the Word. And it said they searched the Scriptures daily. In other words, they made an effort to understand what was written. Yes. They had an open mind. They were, you know, they were, uh, they, their heart was open, their mind was open to accept the Scriptures as they were written. Right.
So we have uh, we have free will. So we have to choose what kind of listener we want to be. Amen. You know, we want to be uh, we want to be the listener that's uh, have have dull ears and only hear what we want to hear, uh, or we want to hear uh, have a noble heart have an open heart, a good relationship with God so that we can hear the truth mm -hmm. uh, as it's written, written. And, and you know, once we once we uh, 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 get to that point uh, and accept the word for for what it says, uh, then we can start to have a meaningful meaningful relationship with God. Yes. And then uh, God will uh, reveal uh, the spiritual truths to us as we read. Amen. In other words, like you know, if we if, if we are heathen and we know we're a heathen, God's not going to reveal anything to us. We're just going to learn the history book and the Bible. That's right. And that's as far as we're going to go. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it's like we're not going to bear any fruit until uh, the truths that are written become a part of us. Yes. We know when it's a part of us when it starts to show. That's right. right. When we when we start to show love, mm -hmm. uh, you know, when we start to show joy and peace, uh, then we can see that uh, that the spirit is taking root in us. Yes. Take a look at Matthew seven twenty four. See what Jesus said about the choice. Matthew 7, 24. <gasps> Jesus said, Therefore, whosoever heareth these, heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. Right. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Yes. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. So Jesus is telling us that we have a choice. You know, we can have those dull ears and only hear what we want to hear. Or the itchy you know, ears. Or, or we can pray for understanding and dwell on the word to get to the point that we understand. Mm -hmm. And then when we understand, then we have to do what we understand. Right? Yes. So we can't just understand for understanding. That's right. We have to get to the point that we have to start doing what we understand. Mm -hmm. That's what Jesus just said. We're not a part of it. I'm sorry? So the word become a part of it. So that's I right. It. That's right. And, you know, that's what happens. You know, mm -hmm. we, we come out of the world into the church, and we're ignorant and don't know it. Uh, and as the word becomes a part of us, a change starts to happen mm -hmm. in us. And we get to the point where uh, when we understand, you know, then we start doing what we understand. Mm -hmm. Right. Amen. Yeah. So we can look at some of our brothers and sisters and we can tell, you know, that you know, how much they understand. Right. Oh, just, yeah. just by the way they act. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but we all come together to help each other. Right. So we pray for each other. Right. We pray for each other to help each other with their understanding. Right. Take a look uh, at Second Timothy. Timothy. Uh, 316. 2 Timothy 316. It's just a reminder. I know you guys already know these scriptures. It's just, we're just reminding. 2 Timothy 316 says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God right. and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Mm that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Right. So this is just uh, emphasizing the importance of becoming a good listener and trying to understand uh, the words that are being spoken to you when the teacher is teaching or the preacher is preaching. You know, we're, we want to uh, 
uh, understand the message, get the message from there, and not just uh, uh, be content memorizing the words. That's right. Take a look at James 119. It says, James 119, it says, Wherefore, my brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. So he's saying, he's saying again, you know, your focus be on your hearing. Right. You know, if you focus on your hearing, focus on your, on your hearing, on your listening, uh, that uh, you will be less likely to misunderstand people, uh, less likely to um, uh, respond in a uh, worldly, uh, angry uh, manner. Mm -hmm. So in other words, give yourself time to listen to what was said mm -hmm. and understand uh, what was being said right. before you, you know, uh, wow. Before you respond. Oh, take yeah, what I just said. Take a look at Proverbs 1813. Proverbs 1813. This will make more sense to you when you're on your own time and you uh, listen to these verses. Proverbs 1813. It says he that answereth a matter before he heareth it, it is folly and shame unto him. Mm. You know, sometimes you're talking to people and before you can even finish what you say, oh, they, yeah, yeah. they think they know what you're going to say mm. and they're going to answer yeah. you. Right. He said, that's foolish. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, get, let the person get their, get their words out. Mm. You know, then you think about what they're saying before you respond. Mm. Yeah. I know we all, you know, have... Done experience that. Yes. Yeah, probably you've done it too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Probably. But, but uh, Proverb is saying, you know, just like James, you know, uh, be uh, swift to hear and slow to speak. Right. Yeah. So then, you know, if, if you do that when you're talking to people, can't you see that you can do that when you're reading your Bible? Yes. You know, you can think you got it. You can think you understand it before you really do. Yeah. So this Proverbs, this Proverbs and James is saying, uh, don't be quick to think you understand everything. That's right. Dwell, dwell on it. Uh, dwell on your ability to listen uh, and get more meaning out of what you're reading. Right. You know? Don't be quick to say, oh, I got it. You know, I can move on. Mm -hmm. You know? Because what happened is, uh, Many times you won't have it. Right. You know, there'll be more message I there. Right. I'm sorry? I used to do that. Yeah, you used to do it. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're getting better? That's mm -hmm. good. As you grow, as you yeah. grow, you get better. As you grow, you get better. Yeah. Well, see, one time, uh, you know, when you're not in the world, you know, uh, we thought we know everything. Mm -hmm. And we would turn all we have something swift to say, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, shut, uh, shut another person off. And we missed the whole thing. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. We missed the whole thing. You're right. Because the world teaches us to uh, act different mm -hmm. uh, than the Lord teaches us. So that's that's the way the world teaches us to act. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, be uh, hurtful uh, mm -hmm. to one another. Build the defense know. all the time. I'm sorry. Always the defense. You're always, You're always on the defense. Here. That's right. 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 Always, that's what the world teaches us. So all of that we have to undo. Okay, we're running out of time. So down uh, at the bottom of your sheet are some things that we can do to improve our listening. So I just read through it. Number one, listen with an open mind. It's difficult to learn anything. If you don't have an open mind, you have to be willing to hear. So all of us being Christians, we accept that the Bible uh, is true. So when we read the Bible, uh, we should be uh, in the mindset that whatever we're reading is true. So we want an open mind to accept what's written. And number two, 
uh, listen to the entire message without judging or refuting. Uh, in other words, don't make an opinion before uh, before you finish reading the chapter that you're reading in the Bible. Don't okay. make an opinion. Or don't make an opinion before the speaker that's speaking finishes speaking. Mm -hmm. So it says listen to the entire message without judging or refuting. Right. And the third thing, uh, determine the concepts and central ideas of the message. That comes you know, from listening. It's like uh, trying to understand what is the message here uh, in this chapter that I'm reading in the Bible. Mm -hmm. you know, what, what is, what's the point? Why do they write this chapter? Mm -hmm. So we want to get that every time we read uh, a verse or a chapter in the Bible mm -hmm. is to ask ourselves, what is, what is the writer, what is Jesus or the apostle trying to tell us mm -hmm. uh, when we read this verse or chapter? And the fourth one is learn to adapt to the speaker's appearance, personality, and delivery. Okay. <laughs> that is talking about uh, removing our worldly prejudices, prejudices. That's that right. we all uh, develop when we grow up. Yes. You know, like, in other words, uh, some people don't like uh, brown skin people. <laughs> some people don't like short people. Mm -hmm. Some people, you know, whatever it is, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Prejudices. With prejudices. All prejudice is what it is. We want to remove all of that when uh, we are listening. That's right. Because all of those things block our hearing. So we can't hear what the person is saying because they got on a pink suit. Mm -hmm. and, and we think that's disgusting for a man, <laughs> for a man to wear a pink suit. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I, he might be bringing a good message, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, you know? Right, right, yeah, right. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, you know? Don't, uh, this worldly stuff, a Christian has to get the worldly stuff out of us so that we can hear the Lord speak to us. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying he may be a, a, a good speaker bringing a good message, uh, but because he got a big afro or pink suit, we can't hear nothing he said. You know? right. yeah. He said we have to grow beyond that. Well, that's why I spend so much time talking about those three circles. You yeah. know, it's like we want to uh, look past the shell. Right. Mm -hmm. We want to connect with the soul, and then we can start to live and enjoy life. You know, some of the most beautiful souls don't have a shell that we think is pleasing to look at. That's right. Yeah. So as Christians, we want to get to that point. Right. That's the shell. Oh. And then uh, number five said we must learn to overcome distractions. I was talking earlier, you know, we got cell phones and we got, you know, all these things going on. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to learn to focus. Mm -hmm. You know, when we're studying uh, the Bible, yes. when we're uh, listening to the preacher preach the sermon, we want to, like, block everything else out and focus on the message that he's bringing to us. That's right. Yeah. And, uh, let's see, that was five. And six says, you know, uh, we can do that by, uh, you know, tuning in to the person and, and try to find something that interests you about what they're saying. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you can take something to share with somebody else. Mm -hmm. Number seven, listening does not mean that you agree. That's right. Yeah, so if nothing about listening says you gotta agree, right? Right. Mm -hmm. When you're reading the Bible, you gotta agree. Amen. This is talking about listening in general. Mm -hmm. So maybe when you're listening, you know, to people, your friends, whatever in the world, whatever, you listen to them, you don't have to agree. But he's, he's just saying that uh, when they're speaking, listen to what they're saying okay. so that you can get the whole message from them, what they're saying, and then you can respond better. Right, yeah. Yeah. So, and eight uh, says, uh, stop, <coughs> stop trying to jump in and talk. So, if, <laughs> I mean, so it's, it's just saying let the other person get their message out to you before you uh, think you got it. Nine and ten, uh, just pay attention, verbal and nonverbal, I mentioned that, and ask questions if you don't understand. That's right. Uh, so, thank you very much. Uh, please, uh, thank you. Uh, take your, take uh, the time to go through this paper on your own and look at those scriptures right. uh, so that you can start to un improve your listening ability. And
and it'll help you get more out of uh, your study. Let's close uh, with a prayer. Father in heaven, uh, thanks for allowing us this time to come together and study your word. Yeah. Uh, please give us uh, a quiet mind. Allow us to focus on the sermon that's about to be brought to us. And please watch over our brothers and sisters that are on their way to the building. In yeah. Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, brother. Yes. You're doing fine, man. <laughs> <laughs>